Hey guys, welcome back. We are in World of Tanks once again. And straight off the bat, we have a very important issue to be discussing. For those of you not aware, for the month of August, all month, there is a special going where if you get 30 kills in one day, you get 300,000 credits as a bonus. Now this is somewhat ridiculous, particularly for people like me who are a bit tight in the cash flow. Um, I've got about four tanks that I want to buy just now and just don't have the money to do it. Um, but th this is absolutely fantastic. 30 kills in one day and you get 300,000 bonus credits. Over and above all the normal credits you get for playing your games. It's brilliant! And I don't know, I've not done the exact math, but it works out more or less, or exactly, about 9 million credits and bonuses you can get. So, get on tanks and get killing things. <clears throat> and this kind of brings me to why I'm playing the KV-1S. I had this ages ago, back when it was like my second tier 6 tank, and I sold it because I was just moving up the, the Russian heavy tank line. But my friends have recently started on that line and they've got their own ones, so I got a bit of money together recently. I just got this a couple of days ago again, and it's fantastic. Gave you one of with a big silly derp gun. Goodbye, Mr. Cromwell. And it's great! It's so much fun. It is widely considered to be OP, as it is. But uh, it's a great tank, and I'm playing this because you can get lots of kills. And there's also rumour of there being a nerf coming up. But we can talk more about that later. So yes, in this replay, this is... I th believe this map is Abbey, I think. Or Monastery. It's one of the two. It's, it's named one of those, and in the replay files, for me anyway, it's named the other for some strange reason. <clears throat> but yeah, not bad. We're pushing down this flank rather easily. SM6 was a good player, so we managed to clear it up fine. Pick up this S35CA, who's trying to be sneaky. Don't mind taking a shot from him, because we'll be able to one-shot him, and it's an extra kill. So yeah, we pushed that flank rather hard and easy. Three kills for me, three kills for the M6. And that's just, it's fantastic, the gun on this KV-1S. It's, uh, let's check the stats. It's 390 average damage and 175 penetration on a tier 6. It's great if you get high rolls, there's a lot of tier 5s that you can one-shot. Uh, I'm thinking of the PZ-4 in particular. Uh, it's it's nice when you can one shot one of those, but yeah, good stuff. So yeah, this kind of a kind of a walkover this game, and it, it's nice when you can just push a flank like that. Of course, a, a lot of people will argue there's not a drawback of the KV-1S. It's a really mobile, maneuverable tank. You can cut about quite easily. The gun is great. It, the gun has two problems, but I think it's perfectly acceptable. It's the aiming time, as you could see there. It's 3.4 seconds, I believe. Which is horrendous, to say the least. Um, and the reload time. You get 3.75 rounds a minute without any equipment or bonuses to reduce that. Which works out at uh, 16 second reload, I believe. So it's a long, long reload. But yeah, that was that replay. Let's jump in another. Time to roll out. And into a game on Himmelsdorf. So yes, the reload is 16 seconds. Quite painful, to be honest. But it really does dictate how you play this tank. It's uh, kind of a peekaboo tank. You know, pop out, take your shot and get away. The only downside of that is, of course, the aiming time. Um, if you can find somewhere where you can get the time to actually aim, fantastic. But it's it's not really designed as a sniper, this tank. Um, I've, I've had some success with sniping, but 
it's really not what this tank is for. It's medium to close range, just go derp. And I would love to fire at that Lux, but I was not taking that shot until I was fully aimed, because I could have easily taken out a T-49 in our team. And that would not have been good. Cave on S here. Bit of a derp moment for me. I thought that bit of the castle was a tree, so I thought I could shoot through it. Never mind. So we've got Churchill 3 here on the other side of the rubble. And just wait for the reload. And first thing we do is stick our nose out, make sure there's no one else coming over the crest of the hill, and then we can go. And I really don't mind taking one shot to take half his health. So we lost how much there? 64 health to take over half of his health. It's a good trade. So now that that's clear, we can push round and get the guys on the other side of the castle. Come up behind the KV-1S. Ooh, Type T-34. Kill him instead. Now since we've got such a long reload, there's no point going for the KV-1S. He'll be dead by the time we can reload. There we go. So we automatically head to this part of the hill. Get down and get along to the cap zone. Oh, a PZ-14. PZ-14? A PZ-4. Shoot him. If we got a high enough roll there, it would have been a one-shot, but I eh, can't complain. But there's no sense in waiting on the reload and wasting another shot on him. We'll just ram him to death. And carry on. You do just cause absolute havoc in a game like this where it's very few tier 6s and a bunch of tier 5s. So they're capping. We are charging along. Still need to keep an eye out for the Hummel. Not sure where he would be. When I used to play Artie um, on this map, I would sit in round this, in between these buildings here, which is like A5 on the map, because you can shoot up onto the hill and get the enemy team once they push round. You can get them there quite easily. It's a terrible map for artillery. And that was the best place I could come up with. But anyway, back to the game. I've got a KV-1 out in the open. So we'll stop and we'll aim, and we'll aim, and we'll aim, and we'll aim, and we're aimed. There we go. Set him on fire as well. Very nice. He's got a fire extinguisher, which is a bit unfortunate. I think he had a good enough chance of burning to death there. But we'll just need to spend another shell on him. It's not the end of the world. That sounds up to three kills in this one. And again, this is part of the 30 kills here. I didn't notice the artillery until he popped up on my screen. Didn't notice him on the minimap. But he's behind the wall now, so no hope of getting him. Just stick our nose out and see who's shooting. Oh, it's a Wolverine! Goodbye, Wolverine. Sitting out in the open, not the best idea. So it's just a Stug, an SU-100 and the Hummel left. Yeah. Four kills. Let's see. Ah, fence posts. The bane of my existence. I did have a replay from a while ago in my issue 100 where I don't know how many fence posts I managed to shoot. It was ridiculous. Unfortunately, I can't show you that because the replay no longer works. It was from a few patches ago. Stug in the open. Aim. There we go. And you get in the habit with this tank of not aiming fully in those situations. It just takes too long. You just need to wait until you're at a decent enough size of reticle that you're happy with it. So we'll take a shot on this guy. I think he might be using the stock gun for the SU-100. It's not doing much damage. But having said that, we don't want to be taking unnecessary shots, so I'll just get in a position to bounce that one and then we're reloaded so then we can go and there we go top gun medal so let's carry on with another and so on to El Haloof and the other gave you one SNL team shouting for help from me twice before the game started and then heads that way okay yeah this can be a bit of a weird one sometimes in the lower tiers because 
heavy tanks. They, yeah, they generally do what they're supposed to, but sometimes they don't. And that is head up to death corner at A2. It, it can be an absolute nightmare, but yeah. I still think one of the best things that you can do is have your tank destroyers sniping from, you know, their general area here. It's B6-ish. And they can snipe and get these guys on death corner. If you let them advance the corner enough, I still think that's a really good way to deal with them. But the chances of being able to coordinate that in a random puppy game are almost zero. I think I've actually had it happen once, and that's when I was in the tank destroyer sniping. And the heavy tanks just stopped round about here, and you just let the enemy team advance. But it almost never happens, so up to the corner. And we have Cromwell, sitting in the open, and I'm not going to say no to that. So since he starts to back off there, we'll advance up to the corner. Didn't want to head round if he was still in a position to shoot us. That's a good start. So we'll stick our nose out. There we go. Right into the lower plate of the KV-1S. And I'm feeling comfortable. I'm in a good position here to work this corner. The enemy team seems to be <laughs> willing to get shot. Didn't aim that shot because I had stuck my nose out, exposed myself, so I didn't want to take any hits, so it was just fire and get away. Tell the M4 to fall back. I don't like people exposing themselves for no reason like that. It's just play safe. I know it can be kind of difficult and awkward, but that's, again, it's sort of a strange benefit of the KV-1S has gone set them on fire there, very nice. Because of the long reloads, you're forced to play peekaboo. The M4 get taken out there. Because you're forced to play peekaboo, you're not sticking your nose out and going, oh, should I, shouldn't I, maybe... You go out, you take your shot, and you get back in cover. And that's how you play. You don't sit in positions waiting for your reload where you could be hit. You just, you get out the way. And then once you're reloaded, you go again and see what you can do. Okay, so we've got one on this side and one hiding behind the corpse of the other KVNS. Can't do much with him. And I'm debating whether to take the chance and go down far enough to shoot the other guy. I'm not so keen on it. Because generally you've got people sniping from across the valley in C1. So we'll just kind of play cautiously, see what that guy's going to do. And he's not moving. I don't think he can get it, so we'll go for it. Just out and fire. If I reacted quickly enough there, I actually bounced that shot from him, so I could have taken the time to aim and actually done damage, but, you know, heat of the moment, mistakes are made. VK lost all his health, so he just decided to charge in. I go in, decide to take the hit, and don't realise that I'm on fire for quite a long time. And that's about as good an advert as you get for premium fire extinguishers. I'm using premium fire extinguishers on some of my tanks. Um, I will make the transition at some point to all of them, no doubt. But it's just... I don't spend gold on them, I spend credits. I just kind of need, need the money to finance such, an, such a choice. But yeah, we're just keeping an eye on this KV-1S because we're not so keen on him. He doesn't seem too happy about coming back up the hill, so we'll just watch, see what happens. And hmm, the scores are 5-10, it's not looking very good. So since that KB1S is staying there, I'll pop over the other side and see if there's something else I can do. I don't want to charge down the hill to get that KV-1S. It's for starters, he could one-shot me, and as I say, there's still probably snipers at the other side of the valley. I'm assuming that hit 
something, because it looked like it would have landed on the tank. Never mind, we may have revealed our position with that shot, so I'll head back over here to this corner. See what this guy's up to, we don't want him sneaking up behind us. So we'll advance the corner until we can see him again. And there we go, we've got contact, I see him, he sees me. I think he sees me. So stay here. We're assuming he's seen me, so wait until we break contact and then we'll turn around and head back over to the other side and possibly pick up this Stug, who we are assuming is coming to flank us. We don't want that to be happening. But our teammate picks him off. Now I'm not sure if I would have been spotted by him or not before he died. So, oop, I'm going to go back to KV1S, but then we we'll get more targets, so we'll go, fine, we'll shoot at these. Buddy takes him out, pretty sure we've been spotted now. But we've got an SU-85, so we'll take a shot at him. Just aim, there we go. Three kills. And we could have stuck our nose out for that KV-1, but I'm very concerned with this KV-1S. He knows I've left that corner, so it's very possible he's been coming up to get behind me. And he has, but managed to catch him still on the corner. So it's back to this nonsense. And that's where I, you're just kind of, you know, testing each other, seeing what you can get away with. Seeing if there's any mistakes being made, I'm like, ooh, that's commander's hatch. I'll take that. And there we go, four kills. Unfortunately I'm on my own now. And they're capping. And there's five of them. So there's a possibility of a Kolobinov's medal. But it's not looking good. Particularly with the cap at that. If, he's, if they're capping from behind the rock it's... Uh, yeah, kind of GG. So I'm just sticking my nose out, seeing if I can see anyone behind the rock seeing what's going on, forward a wee bit, and ooh, he's in a position where I can shoot him. There we go. Five kills. Now I'm thinking tank destroyers, they were possibly in C1, B1, possibly coming up there, so I might head over there and get them. Oh, uh, what am I doing, where am I going, I don't really know. And then he pops up behind me. Like, the last place I was expecting. Two of them. And the KV-1 in front of me. So yeah, that was that. So there you go guys. As you can see, the KV-1S is one of my tanks of choice uh, for doing this 30 kills in a day mission. That was three, re three replays we looked at there and I picked up 15 kills in three games. It's not too shabby. So yeah, KV-1S, tank of choice, as well as the SU-152, that's my other little favourite for this one. But yes, as I mentioned earlier, there was rumour of a KV-1S nerf coming up. I'm not sure if it's actually rumour, you'll be able to find this on the forums now, I think it's confirmed. Um, one of the devs was on a live stream with some Russian players doing a bit of a Q&A, and he mentioned that the, the developers are looking to nerf the KV-1S but they have yet to decide how to do that so it's just on the horizon at some point not even sure they've decided any way of doing it which is you know it's kind of understandable the KV-1S is considered overpowered I do kind of think that the the rate of fire coupled with the aiming time kind of balance that quite a bit but, eh, if you get a good enough position, I can kind of understand, you know, if you've got a position where you can aim and you're not in too much threat from enemy fire, you, you can just have an absolute ball. But, yeah. So, that that's your warning. Um, there's a nerf on the way, so if you don't have a KV-1S yet, or you do and you've not played it in a while, might be time to take it out for a spin and enjoy it whilst it's still... It's glorious, ridiculous, the big old derp cannon self. 
because it may not be that way for much longer. So yeah guys, there you are. Get out in the battlefield, get yourself 30 kills in a day, pick up as many bonus credits as you possibly can, because it's quite a ridiculous special mission they've got going, and I'll be taking advantage of it as much as possible. So, thanks for watching guys, I greatly appreciate it, feel free to like, comment and subscribe for more stuff, and I will catch you on the next one.